Good evening, everyone. Uh, so you, you received uh, the survey results in your packet. Uh, I've got a little summary to present just in review. As you know, uh, the village through uh, SurveyMonkey uh, uh, carried out a survey of uh, community preferences associated with the comprehensive plan update uh, that was available through the entire month of October. And uh, th through the remarkable work of uh, Corey Hoffman, you have some uh, you should be seeing a, a summary of that uh, survey uh, on your screen right now. Um, the uh, uh, and I'll and I'll work, walk you through it here and have a chance to uh, give you uh, uh, throw some questions my way. Uh, first off, who uh, responded to the survey? We had six, ended up having 614 uh, respondents, uh, not quite as many as we had for the park survey last year. I so I lost a bet there. Uh, but more than we had in 2012 for the comprehensive plan uh, survey at that at that time, and that owes a lot to the work that Corey and others did to get the word out. Um, who responded? Uh, most of our respondents were homeowners. Uh, that's similar to the to the survey that we, a similar survey we did back in 2012. Uh, uh, more uh, respondents had children than the general population, so we had a lot of parents uh, that were responding with kids at home. Uh, the age di distribution was generally uh, re responsive to the actual age distribution of the village, skewing, skewing a little bit older. Uh, for example, we had 16% uh, mm -hmm. of the respondents were 65 or older. Uh, in reality, about 10 or 11% of the village is 65 or older. Um, and, but we had a nice healthy mix of both longer term and shorter term residents, even more so than we had in 2012, which isn't I suppose terribly uh, surprising because there was not a lot of residential activity before the 2012 survey, but there has been over the last uh, several years. Uh, we started with the question of why they chose DeForest as a place to live. Um, uh, the number one choice was small community atmosphere followed closely by close to Madison. Uh, you're going to see some of that tension in a lot of the questions, uh, you know, being close to Madison and maintaining a small community atmosphere is very challenging, as, as I think you all know. Um, but this uh, mm -hmm. uh, at least uh, identifies what people value uh, about DeForest and why they uh, choose to live here. Um, just to give you a feel and flavor, we, we asked for the top reason, the second reason, the third reason, and the, the progressive uh, the colored purple bars represent uh, the darker color, the first choice, second choice, and third choice. Um, we compared some of these results to the similar survey back in 2012. The top choices shifted order, uh, but were similar to what we had in 2012. Small community atmosphere rose a little bit, uh, schools dropped a little bit, um, and uh, that, there could be a, a few different reasons, but I think they're tied to recent development activity that's been greater, uh, and school overcrowding, in addition to uh, some tax increases associated with school building might have affected people's perceptions of schools. But again, still one of the top, top choices. <clears throat> um, we asked uh, folks, uh, how, how has your overall experience of living in the village changed over the past five years and gave them a few different choices? Uh, the good news is that uh, uh, the plurality of folks thought uh, the village has actually improved and their living environment has improved over the past uh, five years. A uh, little over a third said it stayed about the same and, and uh, you know, relatively few thought the overall experience has declined. And this is obviously, at least nationally, a pretty turbulent time. So for people to have a positive attitude about the village uh, in this kind of challenging time is, is impressive. We followed up with questions, uh, basically asking them, if you thought things have improved, why? And you see some of the respondents, the most common responses related to the schools, uh, added recreational opportunities, increased property values. Uh, um, and then the flip side, the folks who thought things have declined, the 19% high property taxes, uh, which go along with property value increases, of course, uh, high housing costs, and a feel, feeling that you're gonna see uh, coming over and over again uh, in a few responses, too much growth too quickly. Again, these are the folks who thought things have not necessarily gotten better over the past five years. 
We asked uh, folks uh, about questions about residential and non-residential growth. Uh, we asked which of the following statements best reflect, reflects attitudes on future uh, residential growth or housing. Um, and in this case, a plurality, about 38%, suggested that the village ought to try to slow residential growth um, uh, versus 27% suggesting the village should encourage residential growth. Uh, those numbers aren't too far apart from one another, but they're exact, almost the exact opposite of what we heard from the same question back in 2012. Again, not terribly surprising. Uh, in the few years, two, three, four years before 2012, we had uh, 57 total housing units built. In the last four years, we've had uh, over 570 uh, total housing units built, so 10 times as many uh, housing units. So that, for me, explains a little bit about the difference. Uh, we asked a little bit about housing preferences. You'll remember that a big part of our comprehensive plan update is uh, related to housing unit mix and affordable housing. So we asked folks who live here, you know, what types of housing should the village promote? Um, and the choices that ranked the highest included uh, single family housing choices, uh, generally below a half a million. And you can see once we added the, the, the bigger houses to the mix, the preferences dropped, you know, quite a bit. Uh, senior housing with lower than average housing costs, this was a pretty you know, choice that they could make and many people did cho choose it, that the village ought to promote uh, that. Um, and as you think about maybe the, the, the slight skewing of the survey respondents uh, um, to the older folks, maybe they're thinking a little bit about uh, housing for themselves. Uh, and apartments uh, uh, of sort of the top five rounded out the top five with with average rents. When we talk talked about apartments with lower than average rents, duplexes, and higher than average rents, uh, preferences dropped precipitously. We had two questions about affordable uh, senior housing. Uh, we asked, would you support construction of more housing that is affordable for senior citizens with less than average incomes? And uh, we received a, about nine in 10 respondents supported construction of this type of housing uh, within the community. We, we were interested in parsing off, well, would you be interested in having it in or near your neighborhood or maybe somewhere at some other unspecified place in the village? And 62% of those uh, folks who uh, responded to this question said, yeah, sure, including in or near my neighborhood. So that, that's a you know, pretty strong uh, a vote of support for that type of housing uh, from the population. You all know that, I think, that we're doing a study to determine actual need for affordable housing for different uh, choices or different uh, populations. And we'll be sharing that with you over the course of the next uh, couple of months. We also asked the question, would you support construction of more housing that's affordable for all persons with less than average incomes, you know, implying that you're not just seniors, but you know, folks, younger folks, middle-aged folks, et cetera. Uh, and in that case, the, the support dropped a little bit. Um, so, you know, you remember the 62% saying yes, including in my neighborhood for senior, that dropped to 27%. But if you wanna look at it another way, we have close to 60% of the population or the respondents that said, yeah, we should be providing affordable housing for less than average income uh, folks. Um, we asked folks, well, it, for both the senior question and this question, well, why? What, what do you, why would you say uh, no if you said no? What are the things that concern you? Uh, there were a lot of similar responses. Uh, in, uh, increased property taxes due to increased service demands was one of the reasons why folks might say no. Uh, a concern about decreasing values of nearby homes uh, if, if uh, uh, more affordable housing was nearby was another one. And a, a third reason that really was tied more to this particular question was a concern over increased crime associated with uh, housing for less folks with less than average income. So, you know, I think it was important not only to understand the level of support, but to understand, you know, maybe some of the reasons why people uh, had concerns over this type of housing, which uh, might influence policy and how uh, um, uh, it's approached. Uh, we're also, as you know, tackling economic development Oops. Uh, as part of an early chapter of the comprehensive plan. Michelle's going to talk a little bit more about this later. There's a lot of information on this page, but the bottom line is that folks are interested in more commercial business 
development. Folks are interested in more office and research development and in further revitalization of the downtown. And we heard, we've heard a lot of that. We heard it at uh, your joint meeting with the CDA and PNZ. We heard it at the community meeting we had earlier in October as well. Um, we have uh, uh, still support for industrial businesses. It, it tailed off a little bit from the 2012 survey again, uh, maybe due to the fact that we have seen, you know, fairly significant industrial growth over the past uh, several years, and there might be a, you know, a slight reaction to that. But still, two thirds of the folks uh, said the village should encourage more industrial businesses. We asked a question as the village considers future development proposals, what should be the highest priorities in evaluating those proposals? And we gave them a long list of things that they could choose from. Uh, the highest priorities uh, related to recreation and the environment, uh, reserving enough land for parks and recreation, preserving the natural environment as development occurs uh, in, in and around that area. Um, and uh, in a third place, in third and fourth place, we're kind of managing the offsite impacts, the impacts on schools, the impacts on traffic. So again, this helps us, uh, uh, certainly folks like Brandy and me, uh, evaluate the types of concerns and issues and priorities people have when uh, land does get converted from uh, cropland or other open space to uh, development land. Um, and you can see a little bit about the comparison of what folks thought was a concern now versus back in 2012. We had a few open-ended questions uh, in the survey. We asked folks, you know, you know uh, basically a question to, to get at what their future vision was for the, for the community. Um, we basically asked this question, as, we, as I look forward over the next several years, I wish to forest wood, dot, dot, dot. Uh, and you can see the responses of uh, my, my able partner, Greg, uh, uh, um, or Nick, I'm sorry, too much Greg talk tonight, uh, uh, tallied up the responses and uh, increasing commercial options, received a lot of support in these open-ended questions. Uh, 103 folks thought that was important. Building uh, community recreational facilities, folks mentioned the pool, or uh, got pool, community center, more paths, more parks. Uh, and then uh, another category of responses, let's, let's work to manage or lower property taxes, slow growth, you know, a little bit of, uh, again, some tension in some of the responses of different folks responding to different things. But a, a, a lot of the repeats, as you see the, the information on the right-hand side from the prior questions about uh, improving the downtown, improving character, uh, some support for making sure we're taking care of the facilities and roads and other things that we have here today. This information, in addition to the other information you've shared, will help us tweak the vision statement. I, you, you may recall in our October 20th meeting, we talked about you know, the 2015 vision statement as the guiding principle throughout for the entire plan. Uh, this type of response helps us uh, in making a recommendation to you as to how, how that might be tweaked. Uh, we asked folks uh, about their desires for community amenities. Uh, we specifically asked, uh, we said, hey, the village has a pool task force. We didn't say, hey, the vo village has a pool task force studying the feasibility type and location of a potential outdoor community pool. Beyond that pool initiative, what one other community amenity, if any, do you think the village should pursue over the next five years? And so these were the most common types of responses we got. Uh, increasing trails throughout the village, not only within the village, but connecting to regional trails uh, was mentioned very often. Uh, interest in a community recreation or youth center was also mentioned frequently. Uh, pickleball or tennis, I've heard a lot of pickleball talk over the last many years. Uh, it came out in the survey again. Skate park, uh, again, that's been a topic of discussion many years. And then there were a fair amount of responses of, of hey, maybe put the brakes on that and let's just maintain the things that we have. Uh, and, and just a quick note again, we, we, we said, hey, beyond the pool, what, what do you think? So that's why pool didn't pop up here. Uh, then we just gave uh, people an, an opportunity to sort of vent um, anything else that you want to share with us about the future growth and development uh, of the community. Uh, we heard the uh, slow growth uh, um, folks uh, express their opinions again. Uh, 
particularly related to apartment development and probably in response to the bigger scale projects we heard about over the summer. Um, but also, you know, concern with larger single family uh, subdivisions. Uh, and then a lot of uh, kind of repeat responses, trail and park system. Let's make sure we're keeping our eye on the tax taxes here, uh, promoting commercial and retail development and keeping the, the village uh, a small, family friendly, safe, safe community. That's, uh, that's my summary of the results. There isn't a little bit more analysis included in the, your packet. And now I think all of our challenges to figure out how we you know, combine these results with the other input we've received and will receive to form policy uh, through the comprehensive plan. And I can imagine that there are many other things that you have in your head that go beyond the comprehensive plan that you think that this could inform. And, and certainly uh, it's all fair game, but I think it was a good, uh, again, representative sample of the, of the community uh, providing its, its thoughts on, on the future. So I'm happy to answer questions or, uh, or, or any other insight that you have on once you read the results. Thank you. You have questions for Mark? 